Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, then my name is Shraddha and I make YouTube videos for life in Germany, study in Germany, work in Germany and everything about Germany. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do because then only you will be able to watch all my videos and don't miss any update on Germany. So today we are going to cover a so important topic for all the students who are aspiring to study in Germany that is about scholarship and loan. I have so many students contacting me about the scholarships like they cannot find the right scholarship, they have tried DAD, DAD has not enough scholarship as per their profile, what to do, how to finance their studies, how they can go get loan from Indian banks which sometimes is very tricky because as you already know that um, there is no tuition fees in public university and sometimes the bank manager is a little bit fussy about this issue. So today I I am going to interview Damini who is the co-founder of We Make Scholar and we are going to talk about how you can finance your studies, how you can find more and more options apart from DART scholarships to uh, finance your studies and also how you can be assisted in terms of getting loan from the banks and how this whole process can be made seamless for you. So watch this video till the end because this video is full of information, full of details of what you need to do if you are planning to study abroad. And let's get started. We have Damini who is a co-founder of We Make Scholar and as many of you students always ask me about scholarship, about loan options, so today I thought I should interview someone who can give us some information and also insights of what options are available for the students who want to apply and study abroad. So hi Damini, it is so nice to have you here and yeah, it would be really nice if you could introduce yourself in brief. Okay, so Shraddha, thanks a lot for having me here for this session today. Uh, yeah, so to introduce myself, I think I would tell them a story uh, that, you know, how I started and how I went on from as a student to VMAX scholars. So actually I started, I did my education abroad, my master's in the UK in 2012 to and graduated in 14. Uh, so uh, as an international student, so I've seen that life. So I think the first thing which I want to tell everyone is that I did this education with a full scholarship. Uh, I got a hundred percent of my tuition fee covered. I got living expenses sponsored, the flight tickets. And also I used to get the stipend from the government uh, for uh, my living expenses and accommodation uh, so I think that was the reason that you know I me and my co-founder we decided to get into this space so we started a Facebook group uh, so that was like the start of the story uh, when we were still a student at the university because a lot of our juniors and friends will ask us hey how did you manage to get such a large scholarship and you know where did you find it and what sort of questions you were answered and this that which are you know the common questions which anyone would ask you so we started this Facebook group so that you know all those questions can come in uh, one time and we can answer it so that everyone can get that information so and you know it started becoming a group, where, a group wherein you know we would publish scholarships and people would find information so by the time we graduated, that group had about 50,000 people in it, like in just a one year time. And then those students were not just even Indian students, they were, you know, people from other developing countries who were looking for this information. And I think that was the motivation that me and Arjun, we decided that we would start a scholarship search engine so that was the idea and that's what we started we make scholars.com with that you know a one place where people can come people can come and find all sort of scholarships and that was 2000 uh, in 2015 and uh, towards the end of 2016 a lot of people started asking us about loans also so they will be like hey can you support us with education loans because see in India I think it's not very easy to deal with banks and bank stuff and the mindset is like you know people will be like only if you have relations in bank only if your father knows the manager or you know your uncle knows the manager only then you can get an education loan and I think that looked like a large enough problem to solve and I think that's what we wanted to expand to. So as on today, we make scholars help students with scholarships as well as education loans. So we can say that you know we cover the entire finance part of your higher education. Yeah, so that's that's the story. Yeah, that's so inspiring. I mean, I was like, 
what in one year you were able to get 50,000 so this see that this shows that there are so many students who are struggling to find scholarship and they need information which is not available anywhere right yeah so my next question is um, only as you already know only 5% of the students gain scholarship and get 100% scholarship so what made you get one and how competitive is it to gain the scholarships like what's your experience okay uh, so uh, Shraddha I think it is yes of course it is competitive but I think a lot of people who are not able to get scholarship is not because you know uh, they are not probably eligible enough I think most of the people like at least my peers you know who uh, who asked me that you know how could I get it I think the most common reason why they couldn't get it is that they didn't even know that there are scholarships available so I think the problem is like you know people are not aware where to find these scholarships how do they come to know that you know there are scholarships available so I think people generally refer to the university university website and universities do publish scholarship information but that will be mostly the scholarships which they are offering right which will be again just a portion of these scholarships what people don't know is that you know there are plenty of scholarships offered by government bodies which again if they want to get information they have to go to ministry websites and all like minority affairs and other hrd ministry and other places and then there are a lot of trust and foundations who offer scholarships and then you know people would have to check the individual websites of those trust and everything so i think the problem which we wanted to solve is like you know this finding scholarship has to be easy because you know when we went through this journey we had to go through about 500 scholarships that also you know across multiple uh, platforms and get only about 40 which we were eligible for and then spend time on applying to that so we wanted to make sure that you know people spend their energy should spend their energy on applying to scholarships not like you know finding scholarships so I think that was one motivation behind we make scholars now the other question when you ask me like whether it is competitive so uh, see there is another respect to it which people don't know is that of course, most of these scholarships are merit-based, which is like about 80% of the scholarships. But then there are need-based scholarships also, which are not on your merit, but those that is primarily offered on your family income and your financial requirement. Uh, so that is, you know, mostly trust, foundations, the philanthropist. They are offering scholarships on that basis as well. So that we call it as need-based scholarship. And then other than merit and need, we also have special scholarship. Let's say someone is very good in sports. Uh, there will be some scholarships which are targeted to those students, like, you know, a sports scholarship. Not like, you know, they have to pursue their further education in sports, but in any related area, they can get that sort of scholarship. So I think that is another uh, Thing which people need to know now within merit-based scholarship yes it is competitive which again I explain in this way that you know if I'm offering a scholarship and there are hundred scholarships which I want to offer and I get thousand applications for that I I'm gonna offer it to top hundred based on you know merit or academics or extracurricular all all of that together so you never know whether you know you, are you going to be better than the other 900 so you shouldn't refrain from applying to a scholarship because you never know maybe you are uh, you know your gpa is 8 uh, on 10 and then you feel that you know you have a very average profile but the other 900 are below your profile so you stand a chance then right so you should always keep applying is you know something which i always tell people yeah really important you shouldn't stop yourself just see that's what i tell people when they're applying for a germany application just see whether you get it or not just don't stop mm -hmm. yourself first yeah yeah if you're eligible just go for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes true so uh, damini would you tell us how can a student find scholarship through your website we make scholar would you like to tell us how yeah. can they do that Okay, uh, so Shraddha, there are about 26,000 scholarships listed on vmakescholars.com. Uh, so students, are, of course, it's 50% of Indian students who come to our, scholar, uh, our platform, but there are other, uh, you know, people from other nationality as well. So it's 26,000 put together. So students can come onto the website, they can put their nationality, let's say an Indian student will put India, and which country they're planning to study, let's say Germany, and whether masters or bachelors they have to choose that and they can also further filter it on the university basis and all so they would be able to finally get the list of scholarships which they are eligible for and that information would be from you know all different sources so they would be able to find government scholarships also they would be able to find trust based scholarships also uh, and university based scholarships also let's say in germany that offers uh, lists a lot of scholarships uh, which are government uh, scholarships offered by german government right so 
even those scholarships are listed on our website and people can find that as well so they don't have to like go to multiple platforms they can find all that information at one place yeah and my next question is when do you think is the right time to apply for scholarships and what are the requirements that student should take care of while applying to these scholarships okay uh, so see one thing which people need to know is that scholarships will open very much in advance yeah so it's not like you know you have to keep waiting for your admit which would let's say come anywhere in april or may uh, before your intake year uh, but then scholarships will probably uh, you know their deadline will be like october or november of the previous year so at least one one and half year in advance you should start looking for scholarships which are upcoming next because many scholarships will close soon because they have to go through this entire selection process of three four rounds so that is one thing which i would always tell people that you know start early and most of these scholarships which are especially those which are offered by non on university sources like government or trust they do not require an admit they offer you a scholarship based on your previous academics of course i mean there will be a condition that you know only when you show them your offer letter they would release the money but they can give you an approval without having an admit letter also and the other requirements of course as i mentioned that admit letter is not a very prime requirement to start applying for scholarships the other uh, requirements are you know they would generally ask you for some essays 200 words each they would ask you three or five questions so i think that's where you would have to put a lot of time you would it's almost like writing your sop so you would have to open up your profile you would have to show that why you are the best person or the best profile for them to you know fund and why do you need a scholarship so i think that's the whole process and the application of scholarship looks like Damini, you already know that in Germany there are public universities that do not have any tuition fees. So many of my students struggle to uh, get loan because there is no tuition fees for Germany. So how your team uh, <laughs> help in that case? Um, do you have yeah. any tie-ups with any banks? So what's the procedure yeah. in that case to get loan for those yeah. students? So yeah, so I mean, uh, as you know, everyone who is watching this video would uh, know that you know German public universities have no fees. Uh, so I mean, on the scholarship front, of course, you know the students can apply for scholarships for private universities as well. That was just an add-on point which I missed over there. But then coming to loan, uh, I think banks do have issue with that point. So I think you know it's very funny when people go and ask for a loan for Germany and bank managers tell them, "Hey, you do not have a fees. How can we give you an education loan? Because education loan." ideally means that you know you are giving the loan for fees and not just for staying in germany right so then people tell them hey apply for personal loan and there's that because you know you are just asking for money for living in germany uh, because literally then most of the requests we get is like people will be like 25000 indian rupees is my per semester fee right i think only just some student pass and does that so uh, yeah so when uh, you know when you tell that information to the bank staff they would not be able to you know accept that fact that you know how come german universities are cheaper than indian universities asking only 25000 rupees uh, of uh, a semester right so uh, so what what i want to tell students is that it is very much possible that you can get a loan for your blocked account and you know other expenses for germany even though your tuition fee is not a major component it's just that you know the bank staff is not aware of it they have they are not aware of the education system in germany uh, so they would question you uh, in that way but then if you're applying via vmax scholars we would talk to them and you know when we talk to them we try explaining them hey you know what this is blocked account means and this is how people have to put one year money in advance and why there is no fee so we try to you know give them those logics yeah and so we uh yeah yeah so Shraddha, we work with multiple banks uh, as you asked for the tie-ups so we uh, of course as a government of india funded organization uh, we make scholars uh, has major uh, you know focus on government banks like you know psus like state bank of india bank of baroda pnb canara bank these sort of banks but then we can also help people with private banks and nbfcs as well uh, so now uh, most of the people who come to us if they're going to a public university they generally ask for a loan close to you know 10 lakh rupees or or uh, 15 lakh rupees uh, which uh, you know they can get in unsecured as in like without collateral if we are going with private banks or NBFCs but if they want to go with government bank uh, like particularly then government banks will give only 7.5 lakh unsecured above that they would have to put a collateral security which a lot of people you know if they're looking at on an average 15 lakh rupees of loan they can put a small enough security and get 15 lakh 
uh, of secured loan from a government bank or they can go for a non collateral loan from private bank or ndfc now the role of vmex scholars is that you know when people apply we assign them a financial officer so i think the biggest uh, issue which people face is that you know when they are loan is a subject which is very alien to them and they don't know whom they can talk to and you know ask their questions their parents would have questions students would have questions about repayment payment about disbursement so they don't know whom to ask so what we do is when they apply uh, on our website we assign them a financial officer the financial officer would you know uh, assess their profile their parents profile their requirement and then we would tell them that you know which bank would fit in the best and then we we would share the checklist of the bank the documents and then we would handhold them in the entire process until sanction and then the disbursement also many times students while they are in you know foreign country they would call us that you know i'm facing issue with bank with my money release from my loan so that is called as disbursement so even we help them with that and also repayment so once their course is over they want to ask when they have to start paying the emi and you know in how many years they should finish and all those questions they can reach out to we make scholars so i think that's what we do and making it very clear all our services are completely free uh, we do not charge anything from students because we are funded by the ministry of it government of india that's that's really good because so many students do not mm -hmm. approach uh, these website or these um, companies because they are afraid okay they will ask money nobody does it for free right mm -hmm. but that's that's so good yeah. that you mentioned it um okay so yeah. as i've understood is you are providing or you are an intermediate between student and a bank and i also couldn't make out whether it's a student loan that they are study loan that they are getting or is it hmm. which kind of loan category uh, are they getting yeah. finally when you when they are studying abroad okay. Okay, so Shraddha, that's again very important question. I think I've made a couple of videos also on that. So what we help students with is an education loan. Okay, so but then the bank staff or you know their peers or relatives might tell them to apply for personal loan and does that. So uh, I think people should always go and apply for an education loan when they are you know going for studies because an education loan saves them from paying the interest while they are studying. so they don't have to pay emi or interest to the bank until their course is over plus they get about 6 months to 1 year period to find a job only after that it is important for them to start repayment so i think th that is you know one key benefit of going for an education a student loan uh, which i think a lot of students miss out on so we help them uh, whatever loans we are going to help them is uh, education loan and as you already know damini that we have to open a blocked account for germany so is it like applicable like they put this amount to the blocked account the loan that they get or uh, the procedure is different uh, in terms of germany how is it okay Sure. So, Shraddha, I think uh, that's another important thing which people need to know is that you know when they approach the banks and tell them that you know okay you are approving me a loan, but then you need to know that I need money before visa. I think many bank uh, you know staff they are skeptical that you know what if your visa gets rejected? How can we give you money before visa? And you know how how are we going to get our money back if you do not get a visa? So, uh, so I think it's just lack of awareness what they have. So uh, again, in the bank policies, we have got that added that you know people should. be given money for blocked account um before visa it is called as pre visa disbursement but the bank staff is not aware of it so what i'm telling is like people can get it uh, one again another point that comes into picture is that let's say sbi or any other bank would be like okay i can give you money before visa but then why are you asking me to transfer it to kotak mahindra bank or why are you asking me to transfer it to a private company's bank account like expatri or coracle or does that uh, because you know uh, i'm giving you a study loan i want to transfer it to your university only so that is Uh, you know second challenge which students face uh, again that is very you know resolvable uh, this is a very common problem which we come across and we talk to the bank staff and guide them on that you know sbi is not opening a blocked account so you would have to put that money into some other bank account and that's how the student has to uh, you know present that money before uh, going for visa so yeah it is solvable problem that's that's really good i mean so students guys you know that everything would be solved by we make scholar so just approach them and fill in your details and they will be assigning you a financial advisor right um yeah. and that would help you to find a right loan for you and the right option for you okay so damini mm -hmm. my last question to you before we wrap up is that um 
which tip would you like to give uh, students who are um, looking for scholarships or loan? Do you have any tips for them yeah. that they should take care? Okay. Uh, so, Shraddha, I think I want to share two tips here. Uh, one is with respect to scholarship, is that, you know, people, uh, I think they give up very easily. Uh, they uh, feel that, you know, it's very lengthy process and, you know, it, it is taking a lot of effort and time. Uh, so, see, when I applied for 40 scholarships while managing my university applications, while managing my undergrad work, so I was still pursuing my BTEC back then. Uh, it is definitely difficult, but I think the key to success is the more you apply, the better your chances are. I got the last one which I applied. Uh, so, I think people should just, you know, keep applying. There will be rejections, but, you know, that shouldn't stop you. Just keep applying is one thing I would uh, say. And uh, the second tip would be that, you know, when you're applying for scholarships as well as loans, um, many people, they feel that, you know, of course, you have to be positive of the fact that, hey, I will win a scholarship. But also you have to keep that into mind that, you know, 95 percent of the people are not going to be able to get a full scholarship. So which means you would have to have a backup of funds. Uh, right. So most of these scholarship results would come in in the month of, you know, May or June, which is very much before you have to go for visa. So at that point in time, if you know you lose it, or let's say you do not get a scholarship, uh, you do not get qualified for that, then people start rushing and looking for loans. And in that rush, they end up, uh, you know, going with a with an expensive option because the expensive options will generally be the private ones, which are like very quick. But then you know they would charge you higher in the long run. So people don't have enough time at that point in time to go for government banks. So that's why I always advise that you know even if you have applied for scholarships, simultaneously apply for a loan. Uh, you know you would get an approval uh, loan is going to be valid for six months uh, okay so you would lo lose little money the processing fee of loan like 10,000 15,000 rupees uh, which the bank takes but then at, in the month of let's say June or July when you get your scholarship results if you do not get qualified you would at least have a backup and you would not have to go through that last minute rush so that is another tip which I would give everyone yeah. Wow, I guess those tips are really important to take care and I think you have covered a lot and my audience would be really thankful to you, Damini, for this. And yeah, I would wrap up this session. I would like to thank you for coming up in this video and telling us all the necessary information about scholarship and loan, which is the most important thing when a student is planning their study abroad. So thank you so much, Damini, for oh. being here. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Shraddha. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. So guys, you already saw how much informative video this was and Damni has given you all the tips, all the tricks, all the information that you need for financing your studies abroad. So follow her on her channel and also go watch out her video, which I have also been featured in, which is challenges I had to face when I was here for the first time in Germany. And that video is posted on her channel, so go check it out. I have already put the link of VMAKE Scholar in the description, so don't forget to check out the description and look into their website, which scholarship options they have got. And also, if you're looking for loans, then do not forget to fill their form so that they can assign you a suitable financial advisor and who could help you to get your finances in place. So, And I will see you with more useful information. Until then, bye.